Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we're going to be changing the oil in the Green Hornet WJ, but we're not just using any oil. No, no, no. We're going to be using some AMS oil. That's right. Chris over at Watson Synthetics, he hooked us up with the good stuff. But not only that, he gave us a Fumoto drain valve. I always wanted to try one of these. So here we go. Let's get this in the Jeep. All right, guys, so here is the Green Hornet WJ. I've been working on this this past fall and spring. This thing definitely came a long way. I jumped ahead and I started restoring this thing so I could drive it because I knew that it would take me longer to do the Rec J. So I wanted to drive this and I figured I'd only have one Jeep down at a time. So here it is. This is what we got so far. Interior came out great. Um, I'm loving everything about this Jeep. The only issue it has right now, it's burning some oil. This is the V8. Yep, that's the V8. And uh, well, when I changed the oil, I shouldn't say change the oil. When I got this thing, I put oil in it because it was basically empty. But uh, I noticed that it's burning some oil. And I haven't been driving it too much. I probably should have changed this oil much sooner, but I wanted to run it a bit and do a hot flush, get all that sludge out of there. Uh, naturally, I don't want to put any additives because I don't want to release any clumps of sludge and clog anything up. I figured I'd just let the engine run its course and then I'd change the oil early, but I'm already at about 1,500 miles, so let's see what's in there right now. All right, so this is about 1,500 miles. Let's check this out. It's a little more miles than I wanted to go on my first oil change. Like I said before, there was nothing in it basically when I changed it the first time except sludge. So we are at, yep, we're down about a quart or two. It definitely burns oil, probably leaks oil too, but we don't need to add some because we're gonna change it all anyway. And let's check out this oil catch can. Like I said, I haven't had many miles on it, so we'll wipe off this dipstick. And we'll see what we got here. Yep, basically nothing on this dipstick. We didn't run it enough to collect any oil in the catch can. All right, it's a ramp kind of day, and since we want a hot flush, I'm gonna start this thing up, drive it on the ramps, let it sit for a minute with the engine on, then I'll cut it off, we'll drain all this oil. Right, so the Jeep is up, want to chalk the wheels for safety, then you're gonna pop the hood, of course. <laughs> and once you're under the hood, the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the fill cap. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you can get oil back in the vehicle before you take it out. That is a safety precaution. Now we'll pop under here. I got my bucket set up to catch all the oil. I got some paper bags down there because I'm gonna spill it, I always do. And there is the drain plug we're gonna take out. All right, my WJ drain bolt is a 13 millimeter hex head. Let's go ahead and remove this. Now, it's still warm, so I don't want to burn myself. <laughs> let me make sure my wrist is out of the way. I'm just gonna let this fall into the bucket. I'm not gonna try to catch it. Just let it spill all over the place. <laughs> well, in the bucket. Here we go, leaking. Nice. God, dang it. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Drain, baby, drain. All right, while that's still trickling, I'm going to look around and see if I can find any evidence of other oil leaks. I could see some oil up here. I could see some oil down here. Definitely some on the steering stabilizer. I'm gonna change this. I wanted to do this very, very last because I wanted to make sure I cured death wobble before I did this. We all know this is not a cure for death wobble. It's just a band-aid, so I'll put this on when everything else is done. Actually, it is done. I can do it now, but <laughs> not now, later. Uh, so yeah, uh, little evidence of drips up here. So I'm thinking maybe I have a, a slight oil pan leak. I think I'll just go around the pan and check all the bolts after I put on the oil filter. All right, the oil's still draining, so let's check this out on the bench. We got our drain hose with an elbow. We got a little cap here, and we got the Fumoto valve itself. 
thank you, Chris Watson. His info is right here. So, yeah, let's open this up. This is for the WJ. It is the F106S. It is a size 14 and 1.5 thread. So, hopefully this fits on the WJ. <laughs> so, here we go. Got our gasket right here. Valve body. Little lever. There we go. Look at that. Open. Closed. Cool. I guess this is the cap to put it on when you're done with it. And this will ensure that you can't open it when it's not supposed to. Yeah. Very cool. Just like that. Now, let's read the instructions. Step one, put on the blue gasket. Check. Step two, remove the drain plug. Check. Now we just got to clean out the dirt from it. Clean it up nice. Um, step three, we're going to hand tighten it. And then we're going to make sure we don't cross the Reddit. Step four, we're going to tighten this by hand and add an additional one eighth turn. And we're not going to tighten it on the valve. We're going to tighten it on the body. So I guess not on this hex right there, but on the body itself. And then, yeah, we're going to close and lock it. Cool. Clip on and fill up. Simple stuff, guys. Let's go check out the Jeep, see where we're at. I truly believe it is this Jeep's destiny to drip forever, but we don't have all day. So on with the show. All right, she's on and looking good. Now I got my 19 millimeter wrench. Fits perfectly on the body. Let's give this about a 1 8 turn. I'll snug this down. Make sure it doesn't drip any bit. But again, we do not want to over tighten it. Nice. So here is our valve. We are about to look right into our oil pan. Here's the lever. Here we go. There's some more built up oil. So we know it works. So the other things we have is this hose, it's coiled up, and if you apply some heat to it, it straightens itself right out. Now we got these two ends. These are the ends that go on the Fumoto valve. One is a right angle, the other is a straight one, so we'll just put them on the same hose and alternate if we need it. And again, here is the cap to cap it up when it's not in use and the clip to keep that valve shut. So let's go put the stuff on. All right, here is our valve installed. It's looking good. This clip will be on it, making sure that valve doesn't open. It says Fumoto, really beautiful. <laughs> and of course we got this cap right there, making sure no debris gets in there. So that's what it's gonna look like during 99.9% .9 of its life. But when it's time to change the oil, pop off this cap, pop off this clip, now you can install one of your two ends. We're gonna go with the straight instead of the 90 degree elbow. So this clips on right here. Now we can direct the oil anywhere we wanna go. <laughs> this is gonna be great. Let's give it a little test shot with the little residual oil we have left. <laughs> there we go. Trickling exactly where I want it to go. No more mess. I'm so happy. This is the last oil spill I'm ever going to have. With this vehicle, at least. <laughs> or until I get a Fumoto valve on all my vehicles. All right, when your valve is off and your hose is empty, go ahead and disconnect the hose, put it in your toolbox, and save it for next time. All right, go ahead and lock you up, cap you off, and I'll see you in about 3,000 miles. Now one thing this Fomoto valve does not have that a lot of drain plugs do have is a magnet at the end. So here's what I decided to do. I got me a neodymium magnet on a little swivel hook. So I'm gonna take this magnet on a swivel. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it right on here. Now this magnet can collect all, if any, of the metal shavings. And then when it's time to do an oil change, go ahead and pop this down. All the shavings will flow out with the oil. Let it do its thing, and there we go pop that magnet back on there we go there's an even better place for the magnet want to pop it off it could drip right down in there and then out using gravity bloop all right I moved my bucket because it is oil filter time it is right up there let's go ahead and reach up to this thing 
Oh yeah, she's on there. Come on. <sighs> Got it. <laughs> Every time. Oh, ah, ah, ah. I guess. Oh. <laughs> Shoot, man. I guess Fomoto can't help me with this. I am a mess. Ugh. Always was a mess. Always gonna be a mess. Or something like that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, man. I'm the worst. Oh. <laughs> I'll cheat my life. Now when it comes to oil filters, one thing you want to double check for is to make sure that the old gasket came off. I'm not dunking my hand in that bucket again, so uh, I'm just indexing it up here. Yeah, this is metal. The gasket came off. And the new filter, you're going to want to make sure you get a nice coat of lubrication on it. This way it goes on easier, it comes off easier, and it won't leak. Now, my Overland has a skid plate. They're cool, but they also stink sometimes because i got to reach my hand through it now to get up here. Um, yeah, where am I going? I can't see it. Oh, yeah, there we go. She's way up there. Get out of my way, track bar. There we go. Good and tight. Don't want this to leak. And I'll wipe everything back on my way down and heck while you're under here check all your tie rods check your bolt joints make sure your ends are greased so far so good I just did these all right we got a new oil filter back on we got our Fomodo drain valve good to go now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna torque these oil pan bolts to spec uh, you do not want to over tighten these. It's only about 130 inch pounds, which means it's only about 11 foot pounds. It's going to give these a little bit of a turn. Not too worried about the ones up here because they are dry. It's kind of the ones back here that I'm more worried about, the ones that look like they're soaked in oil. So I'm just going to go all over these, make sure they're nice and tight. Not too tight. Yeah, I think I'm good. All right, we are all done underneath this WJ, and now we gotta work on top, and what we're gonna do is fill this baby. Now, again, I am very excited to be using Amsoil. Finally, I always wanted to try it. I've heard great stuff about it, especially in the racing community. Now I get to use it in my WJ, and here we go. We have to use 5W30 for our WJs, that's with the 4.7 likes. Uh, you could also use 1030 in a warmer climate, but according to the WJ FSM for the 4.7, 5W30 is the preferred oil, and check this out. This is good up to 12,000 miles or one year. I don't know if I'd go a whole year without changing my oil, but it's nice to know that it says it could handle it. So here we go, let's put this in. We just cracked open our first quart. Not only is it important to know what kind of oil your engine takes, but also how much your engine takes. This 4.7 takes six quarts of oil, or 5.7 liters, hence the six quarts Chris sent me. It's almost as if Watson Synthetics knew exactly what I needed. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Here we go. Drink it up, baby. Look at the sunlight glistening off that oil. <laughs> It's magical. All right, six quarts in. Let's cap her up, start her up, back this baby down. All right, let's give her another check, see where we're at. Oh, 
Oh yeah, coming in right there at the safe line. Jackpot. And check this out, guys. We were running two and a half quarts down. That is not cool. We definitely have an oil burning problem. It's probably the valve seals, common issue when you get a lot of miles on these 4.7s. So we could do that in a later video that's very involved, but that should come soon. The more oil you burn, the more it's gonna gum up your cats and the exhaust is a pain to fix too. So might as well fix this pain before I have to fix both pains. So there we go, future plans are made. All right guys, got all the oil back in the WJ. The levels are just right and it is running great. So once again, a huge thank you to Chris Watson at Watson Synthetics. Thank you so much for the AMS oil. Again, thank you for the Fumoto valve and of course the fresh gear. You really hooked me up. Chris wants to hook you guys up too. So reach out to him on Instagram at Watson underscore synthetics and also on his website, watsonsynthetics.com. Give him the discount code DANH10. You guys will get 10% off your orders. Ask about the motor Vex tools, the AMS oil, and of course the Fumoto valves. Uh, let him know I sent you and he'll take care of you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for more projects to come. And that's it. Like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next project. Peace. I hear the happy dog again. Here he comes. That dog is the happiest dog ever, or angriest.